Okay, so now let's look at um, ways that we can use what's called set notation to write some things you can do with Venn diagrams or two-way tables in a simpler way. So some of these terms you will have heard before and some might be new. So sample space, as we know, is a list of all possible outcomes. It's sometimes also called the universal set. And these are the symbols that I use to describe the universal set or the sample space. So here's an example of how it may be written here. Any of those would be fine. Um, we've got A, which is a particular subset. Note the um, symbol there of the sample space. And that's if all the elements in A are contained in the sample space. So A is a subset of our sample space. So all the elements in A must be in our total sample space. So we've got an example here. For example, A is a set of prime numbers less than or equal to 10, which is a subset of all the integers less than or equal to 10. So, um, the, so the prime numbers which are less than or equal to 10 are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So they are the numbers that are in A. Everything else is in A dash or the complement or opposite of A and that makes up our total sample space. So in this case, that would be 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, A dash is of course a complement, so it's the ones that aren't in there. Then we've got this little symbol here, 5. It's a little E looking thing, A, which means that 5 is an element of A, or it's in A. 5 is in A. We've got a circle with a line through it, which is a null or empty set, and it means there's nothing in it. So all the elements that we've got are in some other set. So um, a null set is usually drawn as empty brackets like that. Then we've got N, A, A in brackets. And is this means that um, the cardinal number of A, or how many elements are in A, is what it's talking about. So in this case, here's A, there's four elements in there. So in this case, the cardinal number of A, or NA, is four. Four things in it. That's what that means. Uh, we've got a Venn diagram, which we've used to illustrate how different subsets in the sample space are grouped together. And instead of actually putting the actual um, elements in those subsets, we write how many elements are in each of those subsets. So a bit like what we did before when we didn't know um, what the elements were necessarily made up of, but we know how many were in there. So for exist in this case, our prime numbers that are less than 10 are 2, 3, 5, and 7. So in total, there's four numbers in A. Now remember, some of that in this case might be intersected with B, but in total, our circle of a, there should be four numbers in there. In this case, our subset of B, which we haven't had before, it contains the elements 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Now, some of those are clearly also in A, and we're talking about 3, 5, and 7. So three elements are in both A and B, and that is what goes in the center here, the elements that are in both. We know there's a total of four elements in A, so of course this is going to be 4 minus 1, which gives us, sorry, 4 minus 3, which gives us a total of one element that's just in A alone. And we also know that there's five elements in B, so what's going to be in B only is 5 minus 3, which is the crossover section. Um, so there's two in there. And we know there's 10 numbers between 1 and 10, including those. So um, there must be four that's in neither set A or set B. So it's really um, creating a Venn diagram in a very similar way to what's been done before. Now, these are um, really important ones. So we've got A, upside down U, B. This means A and B, which means where they intersect. Where is the crossover part of the circles? and includes the elements which are common. So in this case, A and B is 3, 5, and 7. 3, 5, and 7 are the ones that are in that section. So you don't write how many there are. This time you write what the actual elements are. And then A up, like a U, B means A or B, or the union of A and B. And it includes elements which are anywhere in A or anywhere in B 
even if it's in the crossover section together. So in this case, the elements that are in both of those are one, two, three, five, seven, and nine. Now, um, two is only in A, and one and nine is only in B, and three, five, and seven are in both, but um, one, two, three, five, seven, and nine are in either or both of those. So that's what we write here. So those um, little symbols are really important. And A only is, of course, the elements are only in A, not in B. And there's two of those. Okay, so let's have a, sorry, there's not two of those, there's only two. Let's have a go at doing this example. So a number is chosen from the set of positive integers between 1 and 8, inclusive. If A is a set of odd numbers between 1 and 8, eight inclusive, so odd numbers in that set, and B is a set of prime numbers between one and eight. Let's answer these questions about it. So first of all, we're going to list the sets and we're going to use set notation to do that. So remember there were some symbols that you were given. I'm gonna use this one. You could use any of the other ones. So we list what numbers are in those sets. So um, the total sample spaced are the positive integers between 1 and 8. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's our total sample space here. Then we've got, um, we need to list the set A. So A equals, what's in A? It's the odd numbers between 1 and 8. So that's 1, 3, 5, and 7. And then set B is a set of prime numbers between 1 and 8. Now, one is not a prime number, remember? So we've got two, three, five, and seven. Now, clearly some of those cross over, which is the whole point. So B, draw a Venn diagram. So let's do that. So we've got a Venn diagram. We've got set A, we've got set B. Okay, so three, five, and seven are uh, in both subsets. So that means we've got three values in the cross section. So that's what we can write there. So three are uh, the number of ones we have in that. And that is um, three, five, and seven. Three, five, and seven. Now what we've got left in A is one number, it's a one on its own. And what we've got left in B is one other number because it's just the two on its own. So one is in set A only. So that equals one. Two is in set B only. And again, that's one number. So it's how many numbers there. That's what um, they're interested in. We also need to write how many are in our total sample space that are outside both A and B, and we've got three numbers, which are four, six, and eight, which are in neither set A or set B. So not in either set. So there's three of those because they're outside the circles. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, part C, list the sets. We've got A, upside down U, B. Remember this means and. So we want to know the elements that are in A and B. And we've already decided that the ones that are in both subsets are 3, 5, and 7. Now, A, U, and B is A or B. So in this case, we want to know all the elements that are in both A or B. So they don't have to be in both. They can just be in one and that's fine. So in this case, we're gonna have one, two, three, five, and seven. Now, three asks for the complement of A. So remember that's not in A. So that means that is going to be in B or outside the circle. B only that is, or outside the circle. So, that's going to be everything but 3, 5, and 
um, sorry, that's going to be everything but 1, 3, 5, and 7. So that's going to be 2, 4, 6, and 8. And 4 is in B only. And the only value or element that's in B only is the number 2. So it's just one element in that one. Now, the next part. Find NA. So that's the cardinal number of A, which is the number of elements in A. How many elements in A? And how many are in A was four elements. The next one is find the probability of getting A. So you can see probability keeps coming. So remember, it's number of favorable outcomes or number that we're interested in over total sample space. So there's four in A. Our sample space has eight. So that's going to be a half. Oops, missing a thing. So now we want the number of elements in A and B. So in this case, it's going to be where it crosses over, where our Venn diagram crosses over. So that's going to be the three section. There's three elements from that crossed over section. You can read this straight from the Venn diagram. You don't need to, but it can be really useful here. And the last part is find the probability of A um, and B, whoops, A and again a and b um, and we can just use the number of elements we found to work that out as well and put it over the total sample space so that's three over eight okay hope that helps